Well, I was doing uh, my master's project at IBM, and that was not in near field. This was really in uh, spin polarized tunneling using the tunneling microscope. And uh, this is uh, the time when I heard about near field and actually was approached by Dieter Pohl uh, whether I would be interested uh, to work in this field. That's the first time I got in touch, but I didn't follow up on this invitation till much later. Yeah, so I have this reputation of being a theorist, although, you know, all the theoreticians say I'm an experimentalist. Um, my beginning was in experiment, okay? So my master's project at IBM and also the time that I spent afters at I IBM was in uh, uh, tunneling microscopy and tunneling spectroscopy. So um, it, it entailed yeah, building an STM, okay, and building microwave cavities around. And uh, there was a lot of tinkering. And ultimately, I think uh, my gap of knowledge about what I'm doing motivated me then to do a PhD in theory. So 95 to 2000 was quite a boom of near-field optics. And I think uh, many people realized during this time also that a lot of hopes, okay, or promises that were made, okay, are difficult to achieve considering, you know, that the fabrication technolo technology and so on was, was not there for these ideas. And I think uh, a lot of also, unfortunately, mediocre work was produced. And I think uh, a lot of people during this time also started to look into other directions. And uh, I think this was during this time that other facets okay, of nanoscale optics came into the field. And so out of near field optics became nano optics, okay, which is a much richer uh, field uh, today. My first conference, um, actually I don't know which one was the first, I just re remember the, the two firsts, okay. So um, one of the two firsts was the uh, near field, the International Near Field uh, Conference, the NFO2 in uh, Raleigh in, in the US. And I presented there as a graduate student with very broken English, it was very embarrassing, but that was a very good lesson. And the second one was um, in, uh, at the uh, Bodensee, Lake of Constance, and uh, Reichenau, that was a workshop organized by Otmar Marty and uh, Professor Mlinek back then. I think the title of the workshop was Photons and Local Probes. And I think this was the first conference where I had a very healthy exchange with very strong opinionated people, so I built a little bit of thick skin back then as a graduate student. I think one of the dreams back then was literally okay, to resolve or record optical images on the atomic scale. So to see the atomic composition. And I think not only seeing the atomic composition, but also analyzing it. So it was the combination of imaging and spectroscopy. On a broader sense, I think the motivation didn't change for me. Um, Today, I mean, uh, it's, it's the same motivation that uh, you know, prevails also my today's work. And this is to measure in areas where nobody measured before. With the hope, of course, to, s to discover something that was overseen or overlooked. Back then we did this with near field, okay, and uh, today the field is much richer, okay, one can look into different other areas. But uh, I think this is the, the spirit of experimental physics in general. You don't only want to validate theoretical ideas, you also want to measure where nobody measured before. Yeah, so it was, it was a necessity, okay, to branch out a little bit. So I was a postdoc, okay, um, in, in, in the US from 96 to 99, and that was a laboratory that was not only focused on near field. Okay, so during that time, 96 to 99, we 
yeah, try to define a new makeup, okay, and uh, nano optics was one of them. And when I moved then in uh, 99 to Rochester, I, I named the lab uh, nano optics. But um, ultimately, I, I think nano optics, I, I must also say that, that nano optics was on the map, okay, in different areas like the uh, solid state physics, people looking at uh, you know, quantum dots and so on. They, they, they use this term and uh, I know that uh, in Constance, okay, you guys used also the term nano optics. But I think in general it was the desire, okay, to be a little bit broader um, than, uh, than, than near field. And I think it's a very fair definition that you're using optics to address the nanometer scale. Whether it's the nanometer scale of the optical field or the nanometer scale of the material system, it doesn't matter. I think you cannot think about applications if you don't understand okay, the science or you cannot control the science. So for me the natural sequence is to understand the phenomenon, then controlling the phenomenon and then applying the phenomenon. Of course we all hope that ultimately something useful comes out of what we are doing. But if we just aim for the application, I think many things turn out to be very shallow, okay? And so, yes, my motivation is probably in the scientific questions. Again, measuring where nobody measured before and trying to understand what I'm measuring and bringing this into context of established physics. And when I can do this, I would like to control this. And that basically then ventures into applications. I think there are both aspects. I, I mean, you know, we, 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 we measure more and more sensitive. You know? So um, we can actually test equations or missing elements in certain equations with sensitivities that nobody was able okay, to, to, to measure. This is of course the scientific aspect, but then in terms of applications, I, I think yes, we have the toolbox today um, from our theoretical understanding and also from our fabrication capabilities to fabricate structures on a small scale. I think very often, okay, an invention is not just an idea. Ultimately, it's also the market that decides whether this, you know, becomes an application. And that, that's where, 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 uh, where a lot of ideas actually stop short, okay? We, we got a great product, but there's mo no market for it. So, yes, if there is a market, then I think our field has a lot to deliver.